All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Cause Streams TV. We're going to be talking about a few things today. We've got early access into the War Within. We're going to talk about what that was like. We're going to talk about some of the new systems that are in place. We're going to talk about what we did. We're talking about any 80s that we got. And at the end of the video, we're going to quickly mention some of the last minute things we did in Dragonflight. So we're going to take a look at all of that. But we are done. We are officially in the War Within, and we've experienced the zones. And so let's jump into kind of talking about what my thoughts are about early access so first of all i didn't really know what to expect right we got early access on thursday so what does that really mean though obviously you can start questing early so before the zones are populated with everyone in the game you get to start a little earlier we get to start on our professions and mining or gathering or whatever it is that you do all those extra things are available for you world quests you get to really enjoy the zones and, and see what's out there and personally i think early access was actually really worth it in my opinion the zones weren't oversaturated so when you start off and you go into the main city you're not struggling with a whole bunch of people there in the server leg and any of that and then as you're kind of exploring going to do different quests it was really nice to know that it's like you can kind of do it at your own pace there's no rush even though when it goes live there really is no rush i'm one of those people that i like to get to level 80 as fast as possible because that's when the game begins for me starting the gear starting to work on professions running around and, and, and gathering that's when i like to really start playing so to have the ability to jump on early and just kind of enjoy the game before everybody overloads it and we server th server problems happen sharding causes problems too many people in one zone causes issues and this has happened every expansion and i don't really know how you fix it when you've got thousands of people trying to do an opening quest in an opening zone it's going to cause lag so that is completely expected i no longer fuss about that it happens even as i'm recording this video it, it is the official release it is 10 minutes after official release of the war within and honestly if i run into server problems problems that I run into server problems it's okay it's gonna happen but I'm really happy that I got that experience a little early so the true benefit of early access is being able to log in early level your character before anybody else and start gathering some of the materials you may need for your professions before they just get saturated by the system I even threw some stuff on the auction house to make a little bit of gold before it went to gen pop because the prices are going to drop so one of the things that really excited me going into the war within is we now get to kind of change around our war band it gets to go from what it was in dragonflight and I took my four main characters Characters from Dragonflight and they've been now moved down and replaced with my new War Within characters so that was a really cool thing to do like I know it's weird and nerdy but it was really nice to kind of here's my new level 80s and characters that I want to play in the War Within that to start off the expansion and level and experience and I wanted to do something completely different now so here is what we look like today obviously my DK is going to be my main this is the one I'm taking into the CE Mythic Raiding Guild and then I've also again I've been wanting to play the arcane mage this arcane mage came over from mop remix and so i threw it in i did a couple raids before the war within was released before early access was open so i did a couple raids got some gear and then i leveled it mainly through dungeons because i wanted to after i finished my death knight i wanted to see what my mage felt like and then lastly we went on and we also did our chamois my chamois is going to be a most likely a restoration chamois so that way i can give a friend of mine a break from healing and then and then i may also play elemental just to see what that feels like so those are the three characters that we've gotten up to 80 so far okay and just quickly let's take a look at where each of our 80s are in regards to item level first taking a look at the dk this is my main so i put a lot of time into this character i've done as many world quests as i can to get gear i've done basically everything i could do i did dungeons um and i also got the res resonant crystal item that you can get from the renowned vendor so the dk starts the war within at 552.94 basically some of the items he's going to need is a feet a chest some wrists but overall not in a bad spot so that's where the dk is starting off going into week one and when he starts doing heroics and changing gears taking a look at our second character this is the mage that we worked on so the mage uh, obviously i didn't put as much time into the mage as i did as the dk mainly because this is just kind of an alt that i'm going to play with here and there my main focus is going to be the dk he's the one i'm going to get ready for mythic rating so the mage is at 531.38 um obviously he still has some 467 gear for when he was transferred over from mop remix but not really in a bad spot i'm kind of happy with the items that he has i'll probably do a few heroics the way he feels since it is a dps class but that's where the mage is starting going into the war within.
And last up, we have our Shammy that we will be playing Resto and Ellie on. He goes into the War Within kind of at the same level, item level. The Mage is at 532.19. Still need to upgrade the head and chest on him and in the waist. So a few items that he needs upgrades on. Not too many, though. So he's not in a bad spot going into the War Within either. Probably do some heroics on him as a healer. See how that feels. And that is where these characters are at when we start week one and get into doing heroics when the War Within then went live. In regards to timelines, the Death Knight took about nine hours and I mainly focused on questing. I didn't do any dungeons during that process. So we went from zone to zone to zone. In the first two zones, I really heavily focused on doing the main story and as many group quests as I could. So if there's a nice clump of quests together, we'd go, we'd grab them all, we'd do them and then we'd hand them all back in. And then as I kind of got further in and around level 77, 78, I was like, okay, you know what? I want, really want to finish the story so I can make sure that when I'm done, uh, when I hit level 80, I get the world quests and all that stuff gets unlocked right away so around level 77 78 i heavily focused on just the story and i went in and eventually i think i hit 79 and that's when i finished the campaign and then i went back and i did some of the other quests that were available to me i ignored world quests because i didn't want to do any of those until i hit level 80 so i just flew around did some more quests worked on the lore master achievement and then once i dinged 80 i went back handed in the final quest and started doing world quests for gear we started doing anything that was available that would give us a, a reputation gear gold and then we flew around picking up mats and so yes that's about how long it took on the death knight my goal for each of my characters is to have one profession that i either if the two professions can work together i will have for example alchemy and herbalism um or skinning and leather working but for because my dk is an enchanter I, I got i got a gathering profession so i got herbalism i plan on having another character that's herbalism and alchemy and then that way they can that way my death knight can send them extra herbs to speed up the profession leveling then we have our mage i wasn't actually able to track the time on my mage because i split my time between two different computers so i wasn't able to track how long it took i'm gonna say maybe around four four and a half hours purely through dungeons so with queue time and everything about four 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 and a half hours and then we did the same thing we flew around did some of the major world quests that give gear and then we just kind of focused on poking around and gathering my mage is a tailor i've never done tailoring and then he's also taken enchanting so any green items that my mage gets he can send all those he can disenchant them and send all those mats over to my death knight <clears throat> and then lastly uh during our live stream on sunday we did a full sit down and just dungeon spam up to level 80 with a with a group of friends the shaman uh with all the instant cues we were getting because we had a tank and healer combo the shaman took exactly just a little bit over three and a half hours i think it's about three hours and 35 minutes so dungeon leveling really isn't that bad if queue times are low you can really blast through very quickly so that is an efficient way to level after you hit level 80 with on one character and can finish your campaign and then my shammy has always been a miner and a jewel crafter so he will continue to be that so as i was leveling all of my characters obviously what i was doing is actually working on my professions and who knows if i stick to this because in dragonflight i started this and then i stopped midway through season one i think because i just didn't want to keep up with it but what i want to do is actually keep up with my professions and be a little more self-sufficient last expansion cost me about five million gold in total spent on gear mats uh character enchantments all of that stuff and i just i want to see if i can focus on making that all of myself this expansion and see if i can save some money through just farming mats as i play and doing stuff like that so that is something i'm going to focus on in this season so as we were leveling each character we were going around picking up we're mining tailoring and disenchanting whatever we could and then we always go back and actually use some of those items and get our professions up so we are working our, on our professions as we play our characters and it's always fun early on in the expansion because it's one of those hey it's fresh it's new everyone's kind of doing it um one really cool thing is as you're flying around each zone and pick and mining there's actually these resonance crystals that are in the air and these crystals give a resonance crystal which is part of one of the currencies that you now get in the war within and it also gives you your harbinger crests your weathered harbinger crests so i've been collecting those on all my characters as you kind of fly around and you farm it's it's a really cool little extra thing that they've added in the game and i really do appreciate seeing stuff like that it gives you that little extra to do it provides a more engaging experience than just oh you know lift up fly to node land farm continue so it's kind of nice as you're flying node to node you can collect these resonance crystals in the air in regards to some of the new 
new Dragonflight zone. Let's touch on that a little bit. For the most part, they're new and the zones are exciting. There was some really beautiful times in each zone where you'd run through and you'd see something different that really stood out to you. So the Isle of Dorne is your outdoor land. And then it's cool because you actually move, go down into a tunnel and work your way underground into all the different zones or the war within. And I thought that was a really cool concept. The tunnel to fly down is really fun. It's seamless. There is no load screens. There's nothing unless you take a flight path then it does actually load the next zone for you but if you fly down yourself it's really fun and you speed down and you end up in the ringing deeps to start and then it's easily just to it's very easy from that main hub to jump into hellofall or continue working your ways down to as ashkahet there are some really cool structural things that blizzard has accomplished in designing these zones uh the ringing deeps is kind of your like mechanical zone there's, there's some forestry and some of that but it's really like more of a very industrial area uh, ashkahet is your spider zone it is the deepest part of the zones that you go into but the the architecture that they built for this zone is phenomenal it's not one of my favorite zones but it's just absolutely beautiful what they've done with these structures and the buildings and how you initially go in and do the campaign quest i'm not going to spoil anything you guys will get there but it's really cool to see the different things that happen and how they stay there as you progress through the zone so that was a really cool feature and then of course the my favorite zone so far it was this was one of the most epic things and so far a lot of people i've talked to say the same thing when you fly into hallowfall for the first time it is absolutely epic but i flew into hallowfall and it was absolutely amazing i turned off my ui and i just continued to fly it was one of the most beautiful things i've seen and as you kind of play in this zone different things happen to the crystal and, and the colors change it's just i absolutely love having this giant crystal in the background as i'm questing in the zone or doing world quests i thought hallowfall was one of the best made zones so i truly enjoyed that so my overall impressions for all of the zones is uh my favorite would definitely be hallowfall fall going to ashka het and then the ringing deeps and then the isle of dorn last because it's the main one you start with and there is a very good chance that a lot of my videos and a lot of the initial starting points will always be in Hallow fall just because of how amazing that zone looks with that crystal in the background and there are some really nice peaks that you can fly up to and just look at the crystal from and look at the light shining through blizzard did a phenomenal job of setting this zone up and I just want to say all of these zones are massive. Even though you're underground, the ceiling is very, very high. I was very impressed so far with everything that I've seen in The War Within. I am truly loving how they built up from what Dragonflight was into what The War Within is. So moving away from the zones, let's now touch on the one amount that I've acquired this week. And it's kind of funny, I was talking to my brother, Wowaholics101, and he has been farming the Resonance Crystal Mount. So basically you farm the zone, it gives you a satchel. In that satchel is a chance at the mount and kind of like the Grand hunt in dragonflight i flew through the grand hunt didn't even do anything opened it and i got the mount on my first try and of course with the resonance crystals we have a similar situation and in the satchels there is the dauntless imperial links and on my first actual attempt at open one of these i ended up getting it and here it is it is basically an armored kitty cat and i think it looks really really cool it's very thick so it has like the body of a wolf but it's a cat and yeah so i'm really happy i got this on my first attempt so that is a plus one and a great start to the war within mount collection and then quickly moving on let's touch on some of the final things that i did in dragonflight which i do recommend i don't know if booleans were actually sticking around for after the reset on tuesday so that after this video it may be too late but if you have booleans i do recommend jumping in and using them prior to that reset that's what i did on mine i went i think i've had about 15 booleans to use across two characters so i went in and i just started buying all of the transmogs that i wanted some that i may never use but it's one boolean per piece of transmog and that's a lot easier than having to go back if you expansions from now to farm these so that's what i did across few characters we got we used the 15 billions got a whole bunch of transmog and so that is it that is those are my thoughts on early access for the war within and what it was like i'm very happy with what the war within is bringing into the world of warcraft i'm happy with the systems they're building off of and i'm excited for this next chapter of the game i'm really going to try this expansion to really push out more content in regards to my videos uh, more information and i'm really looking to i'm going to work on building a community for those who just kind of want to play the game and get information at a casual level there's going to be raid videos coming up there's going to be dungeon videos coming up there's going to be as much as i can 
can put out for you guys in the time allowed so i hope for those of you who are most likely logging in and already 30 minutes into the game i hope you are having a blast in the war within i wish you the best of luck in your farming in your collecting in your professions in your achievements anything that you do in this game i hope that you enjoy it and i hope the war within is just as exciting and you are just as hyped as i am good luck in the war within i can't wait to give you guys some more content and i'll see you guys in kazalgar peace out